taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Juana Barraza The Little Old Lady Killer Juana Barraza was born on the 27th of December, 1958, and was almost a Christmas gift. Her birthplace was Hidalgo, a rural area north of Mexico City. Barraza's mother was an aggressive alcoholic who reportedly exchanged her young daughter for three beers, a disgusting dereliction of her maternal duty. This was to a man who repeatedly raped young Juana while she was in his care, it was also by this man's hand that she became pregnant. Juana Barraza had four children in total, although her eldest son died from injuries sustained in a mugging. Barraza had an obsession with the lucha libre form of Mexican wrestling, which was a professional form of the sport, where the contenders wear masks and participate in huge mock battles. Before she was arrested, she was a well-known professional wrestler, going by the ring name, La Dama del Silent Show, The Silent Lady. When the slayings first began, law enforcement dismissed any notion of a serial killer in Mexico City and they were heavily criticized by the media for it, especially in hindsight. Barraza's first victim was a woman named, Maria de la Luz González Onaya, who was killed on November 25, 2002. Once Barraza entered her apartment, González made some comments that Barraza considered derogatory. Taking the comments personally, Barraza became infuriated with her and beat González heavily, before strangling her to death with her bare hands. The motive in this murder would prove to be a somewhat accurate portrayal of Barraza's motives throughout her murderous rampage on the elderly women of Mexico City. When later asked by detectives for her reasoning behind the killings, Barraza replied, When I saw them I felt much anger, and more when they acted uppity or believed that because of their money, they could humiliate me. All of Barraza's victims were women aged 60 or over who lived alone, they were easy targets. Once she had gained their confidence and had access to their homes, the female pensioners were bludgeoned or strangled. Afterwards the homes were ransacked and anything of value that was easy to take, was stolen. Police also reported that there was evidence of extensive and unwanted abuse in a number of cases which tended to be unusual in female serial killers, though it does seem to be becoming normalized as time progresses. Bernardo Batas, the chief prosecutor in Mexico City, was asked to come up with a profile of their killer. His initial thoughts were that the murderer had high intelligence and a clever mind, and that they likely struck after a period spent gaining the trust of an intended victim. In its scope-widening assumption of vagueness, it wasn't quite the profile that was going to separate the murderer from the masses. Law enforcement officers who were working the case added that, they thought the perpetrator was using a ruse to gain entry. In fact, they thought their killer was posing as a government official, possibly offering welfare assistance. This would be a good call. At one point, it was hypothesized that there were possibly two murderers on the prowl as there appeared to have been trouble with conflicting evidence during investigations. This idea was discounted upon further examination. Also leading detectives on a merry dance, was an odd coincidence that was discovered, at least three of the victims owned a print of an 18th century painting by the French artist, Jean-Baptiste Cruz, boy in red waistcoat. This strange occurrence distracted detectives for a while, but as before, further exploration of the evidence discarded it as happenstance. By November of 2005, the Mexican authorities were reporting that witness statements claimed the killer had worn women's clothing to gain access to the victim's apartments. This new information was seen as vital and possibly just the impetus they needed to nag themselves the killer. In one incident it was stated that a large woman in a red blouse was seen leaving the home of a murdered woman. Following up the lead fervently, maybe with too much gusto, the police received further criticism for launching a swoop on Mexico City's transvestite prostitutes. They had figured that their serial killer was a man wearing women's clothing and jumped immediately to conclusions. 
Not knowing what to do next and in a state of flummox, police began checking the fingerprints of bodies in the city's morgues. This was in the belief that Lame Tavijdas, the old lady killer, might have committed suicide as the rate of murders had dropped. What else would a murderous transvestite do? Thankfully for the law enforcement of Mexico, a major breakthrough in the case came on 25 January, 2006. At the home of the serial murderer's latest victim, a suspect was arrested fleeing from the scene. Ana Maria de los Reyes de Faro, 82, lived in the Venustiano Carranza borough of Mexico City and had been strangled with a stethoscope. The suspect who was caught fleeing the scene, surprised everyone when it turned out to be a woman. The detainee was Juana Barraza, 48, a female wrestler known professionally as, the Silent Lady. Juana Barraza it turned out, was a good fit for the witness reports. She was of exceptional strength and stature for a woman, and she also matched the witness reports from previous murder scenes that described a masculine-looking woman. Unfortunately at the time, that description had led police to look for a transvestite. It was also soon noted that the former wrestler resembled composite images of the killer. More damningly, Joanna Barraza was carrying a stethoscope, pension forms, and a card identifying her as a social worker when she was detained. The suspicion that the killer was acting as a government official, was an astute one. Prosecutors from Mexico City said fingerprint evidence from the crime scenes linked Barraz to at least 10 of the murders. This is a significant part of the 40 murders attributed to the killer. Juana Barraza confessed to killing Alfaro and three other women, but denied any involvement in all of the other murders. She told reporters that she had visited Alfaro's home in search of laundry work. In the spring of 2008, Juana Barraza was tried, with the prosecution alleging that she had been responsible for as many as 40 murders. Barraza, however, was adamant of her innocence and admitted to only one murder, that of Alfaro. She went on to tell the court that her motive was lingering resentment of her mother. On 31 March, 2008, Juana Barraza was found guilty on 16 charges of murder and aggravated burglary. She was sentenced to 759 years in prison. Sentences imposed in Mexican courts are usually served concurrently, but the maximum sentence under Mexican law is 60 years. It is likely she will serve the full sentence in prison.